Hello, my name is Mark Rowland and I work for Preferred Technologies. Today I will be showing you how the Life Safety Power integration uh, works. This will be a demonstration of its capabilities. Uh, the Life Safety Power integration is an integration that was designed to work with the Genetic uh, Security System. It runs as a plugin, which is shown here, and uses a database to store information about the Life Safety Power devices. The task to configure the devices is an, a custom task and it, you can get to that from within security desk or within the configuration tool either one will work uh, so I'll go ahead and start that up you'll find it under the prep tech integration solutions section when you're viewing all tasks in security center or uh, the configuration tool simply click on the uh, icon for the task to start and this is the default screen kind of give you a little bit of a layout uh, on the left here if we had devices they would be listed here and you'll see in a minute as soon as I add a couple that those will be there you just click on the device and then it will pull back the information and then you can view the information about the device and the attached boards by clicking on the tabs that you see here so I'm gonna go ahead and add a device so I click add device and then I put in the IP address of the device and then give it a name um, I'm going to call this Tech Main Building. And then it connects to the device via the uh, SNMP protocol, and we're using version 3, so you'll need to provide a uh, username and a password that you would have set up on the device when you were configuring it initially. And then we'll click Save, and I've added the device. I'm going to add another device. This is our warehouse. And save that. So now if I click on PT main building, it's going to go out and it's going to grab the information about that device and pull it back for us. So here we can see that it has an IP address, what the site ID is set to, what the enclosure temperature is, and we do have a temperature sensor hooked up for the external temperature, so we're able to see that as well. Um, if you don't have a sensor hooked up, this will say unknown. Um, we have the hall sensors, A, D, C, 1 reading, etc. Um, you also have the ability, if you have these uh, ports, if you have something hooked up to these ports, you can turn the devices on and off here. So, uh, this ML4 board has a uh, one power supply hooked to it at, the, at this point, so you only see one FPO tab, and we have two M8 boards. <clears throat> the alarm configuration tab is where we configure uh, notification events for different alarms that can be raised by the device. So uh, if we select an email notification group, everybody in this group, every user that's part of this user group that has an email address will get an email notification with the details of what's going on. So it will tell you uh, which device it is, which output it is, and what the issue is. And um, I'll demo that here in a little bit and you'll get to see the email. Uh, these, the rest of these, external temperature system, fault status, etc., these are events that are received by, the, or that are sent out by the device, and then you can select custom events that you've configured inside the Genetech system uh, to be raised when those events are received. And then you can create event actions to uh, do additional uh, things with inside the security center software based on when those events are raised and I have a couple of alarms set up to be triggered when the voltage exceeds or goes under the configured limits and also for the current and I'll, I'll demo that here in a little bit um, once I've got these set up so that you can see how that works so set the current as well and then we'll save our configuration So I saved the alarm configuration for that. If I select the warehouse, you'll see that we actually have two power supply boards attached to that along with two inmates, so there'll be an extra FPO tab up here. Um, again, pulls back the information. You can see here that we've got it. That one's configured to, you, uh, 
to report everything in Celsius for temperature, so we see it in Celsius instead of Fahrenheit. And again, because there's not an external temperature sensor hooked up, it says unknown here. Um, if anything is requiring attention, you'll see it turns red. So in this case, the, the board is indicating that some service is due. Um, so this is a yes right now. Normally this would be green and it would say no. So if I collect or click on the FPO board, again, you can see there's a system fault here. So it's showing red versus green. So I'm going to go back to the other board. this is the FPO board. So you can see on this FPO board that uh, we're outputting at 25 volts. We don't have any AC fault statuses or system fault statuses. Um, our battery voltage is at 27 volts as well. We're not sent, we're currently sending a trickle charge down to the battery. It's at about 95% charge. Um, our FAIs are not active. It also over here in the history will tell you how many AC counts, fault counts you've had, how many system fault counts you've had. Um, based on when the battery was installed, how long the battery's been installed for, uh, how long the device has been installed for, when we last tested the battery, and how long that battery test ran. Now in order to test the battery, <coughs> there's a couple of things that you have to have uh, configured. One, under the battery settings here, you need to make sure that you put in the rated battery life, how many years, and the rated battery capacity in their amp hours, and you have to have monitor state of charge enabled. If I turn off monitor state of charge, a couple of things occur. One, um, the begin battery test button is going to disappear. So it's gone now, so you can no longer run a battery test. And um, you may or may not get battery charge information. You must also have a current sensor hooked up uh, between the battery and the a power supply board uh, in order for all of this to work properly and those can be you can get those those current sensors from life safety power so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the state of charge back on so that I can run a battery test and show you how that works so once I've turned it back on this will refresh in just a second the begin battery test becomes available um, when I click begin battery test you get a warning that says that basically we're telling the board to run on battery power so if the battery is not fully charged when you do this and you start the test and you have an AC failure that goes for an extended period of time, when because the, the battery is always discharging, if it completely discharges and tries to switch back over to normally normal AC power and there's no power there, your board's going to power down. So this is just a warning making sure to let you know that you want to do this test when you have um, solid AC power and, and there's not going to be any kind of power outages. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes to proceed. If I click no, it, it won't start the test. But I'll go ahead and click yes. And then this will switch over to end battery test once it starts. And you'll be able to uh, cancel the test at any time. So I'm going to let it run for you know a few seconds, and then I'll stop the test. And, and then you'll see this information here will update. Typically, you would want to let this test run uh, its full length so that you can get a good idea so that you can get a uh, good idea of how long the battery is going to last so so now that the battery test has been stopped you can see here that uh, the last test date is updated to today and uh, we ran it for 30 seconds so uh, that's what you can do on the FPO board to give you all the information M8 boards uh, this is where the M8 boards have inputs and outputs on them. Um, so this is what you can send power through and you can have an input come in, depending on how you have it configured, which can either tell the board to send power or not send power through its output. Um, so here is a list of all the outputs on the board. There are eight of them. What their current status is, are they enabled or disabled descriptions. So you'll know that this is for door number one, door number two, etc., etc and what the vo current voltage is being used, current current power, whether or not uh, the input is active, inactive, and whether or not the output state is active or, or the FAI state is active or inactive, and uh, what the current output status is. Uh, if it's disabled, it's not going to have any use, so it shows here red. Um, if it's normal, it'll say normal. If there's a fault status, uh, meaning that there's something wrong with it, 
such as voltage going beyond the upper limit or going below the lower limit, it'll show a fault status here. It'll say fault and it'll be red. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate um, how you can modify these settings and also uh, what it looks like when you get an alert. So here you can see I've got uh, lock 1, 2, and 3, or demo lock. Currently demo lock is disabled, so if I check the box to enable it, I can do that. Um, what the input type is, so are you using a normally open, normally closed, input type, uh, voltage, etc. What type of a lock you have, is it a mag lock, fail safe strike, fail secure strike. Uh, do you want to unlock when the fire alarm is pulled? Do you want it to unlock on when there's an AC loss? And do you want to get an alert when, uh, when it goes into a fault status? And then you can set the upper and lower voltage limits. I'm going to go ahead and set uh, the voltage limit on this one at 24 volts because we're currently pulling 25 so that you can see what the alert uh, looks like when it comes through. And then I'm going to save my change and it's going to send the information to the, uh, the board and then it will refresh and we should see it change here in a minute to show us that we have a fault status on number two and that uh, number three is now enabled and then it'll start telling us how much voltage it's pulling and whether it's what its current status is. So you see here it's a fault status. When I did that, a couple of things happened. I got uh, a fault status event and a voltage exceeds upper limit event. And then because I had in Genetech configured it to raise an alarm when the voltage exceeds the upper limit, I also got an alarm here. And I also received an email telling me that the uh, there it is that the voltage exceeded the upper limit so it tells me here this is the device PT main building its IP address which zone it was so it's on M81 zone 2 and that it, what happened it exceeded its upper limit it was read at 25 volts it was set for 24 I also got one for a fault status indicating that the board is now in a fault status so it says yes here if I go back and I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge my alarm here. Edit this again and change this back to 30. And save it. It'll go back to a normal status and I'll get another email indicating that the uh, system fault is now no. So we'll wait for this to refresh. So it's now in a normal status, and I should now get, there it is, it says PT main building, FP1 system fault status is now no. So that is a demonstration of how the alerting mechanisms work within the life safety power, um, how you can assign custom events to be raised when these types of conditions occur, and then an example of how that custom event is used to then use to raise an alarm in Genetech uh, to show you how that works. So inside of Genetech, under general settings, under your events, this is where you would create your all of your custom events and you would use you would set them up as role custom events. And then in your actions, you can create a new custom action or a new event action here. Select the role and then select the event. So in this case, um, FAI status for example. And then what do you want to do? Uh, do you want to raise an alarm, set a threat level, send an email, send a message, those types of things. So uh, basically you can configure the Genetech system to do pretty much whatever you want based on when a custom event is raised. The only difference is the email will tell you exactly what the issue is, whereas the custom events are a little bit limited on based on the event that you have. Uh, if you're using the same one for multiple boards, you won't know which board it is per se because that information is not able to be passed on due to limitations within the Genetech system. So I highly recommend an email notification group to be utilized along with if you choose uh, the rest of the custom events. So thank you for your time today. Uh, that's an overview of the Life Safety Power uh, integration and how it works. And if you are interested, uh, you may contact uh, Preferred Technologies. Our website is www.pref-tech.com. Uh, or you can Google search uh, for PrefTech and find us that way. And our contact information is on there. 
Again, thank you for your time and have a great day.